and I fill up this balloon by my breath, my air, the same way God wants to breathe life into us. Welcome to this teaching in the series Fighting for the True Gospel. And I am very excited to be with you today where we are going to talk about how to be filled of the Holy Spirit. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? What do the Bible say about it? And we are going to look at some of the misunderstandings when it comes to receiving the Holy Spirit. So I'm excited for this. I'm, I'm really excited for this series, Fighting for the True Gospel. We have looked at repentance and faith and the baptism water. And then we started looking at the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And it has just taken me away. Like I'm blown away with it. And it has become much deeper than what I actually thought about. I thought about first do maybe one lesson, but I actually end up with four lessons all in all. In the first lesson, we look at Jesus' life, how he got filled with the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit led him out in the desert, how he came out of the desert in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we looked at Jesus' life and the power he was walking with, the power of the Spirit and what he said about the Holy Spirit and how we should receive the same Holy Spirit and how it was the best for us, you and me, that he went to heaven so he could send the Holy Spirit down here. And it was just amazing to look at Jesus' life in, in the first lesson. And I have a picture of it here where you can see that lesson and lay a foundation with what it is to walk by the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we continued, as you can see here, with the next lesson, where we looked at the Holy Spirit in the early disciples' life. And they got the same power, the power to become a martyr for Christ. We looked at the transformation that happened in Peter's life, in Stephen's life, in, in, in the early church when the Holy Spirit came in. And when we see of, look at the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we just need to question do people in the church really have the Holy Spirit? I know there's many who think they have the Holy Spirit, but they don't. And we looked at that in the last lesson where we just looked at that. And that I'm, 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 it really done something me. Like since the last lesson, I've seen the Holy Spirit work in a beautiful way. We have seen God's power because I've become even more aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit than I've ever been before. I've become more aware of how much the Holy Spirit wants to influence my life. And I've seen many things already, but this teaching really done something in me. So that was the second lesson where we looked at the Holy Spirit in the early disciples' life. And if you haven't seen them, go back and see them. It's so important to get the right understanding. Faith comes by hearing by the word of God and it's our foundation we should build on. And there's so many misunderstandings out in the churches today and the power is lacking and the life is lacking. And why? Because the foundation is gone. Why do people still live in sin? They, 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 they really don't understand what repentance is. They have not understood what baptism is. Why do people live without victory and, and power because they don't have the Holy Spirit? or have not understood what it is to be filled and continue being filled by the Holy Spirit. But that was the last lesson. And then this time we are going to look at how do you receive the Holy Spirit? How did they receive the Holy Spirit in the Bible? And we're going to look at some misunderstandings when it comes to being filled by the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at, for example, when do you receive the Holy Spirit? We're going to look at the whole thing of, Baptism with spirit and fire. What do that mean when you, with the fire, what is that? And we're going to look at that today. And I'm actually going to do one more lesson after this. So today, how do you receive the Holy Spirit? And, and, and this, and then next time, I'm going to do one more lesson number four, where we're going to look at the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to look more at tongues and prophecy and the different kind of gifts and how that works. And then we are going to look at how you continue being filled of the Holy Spirit. And then after next time, I know there will become more teaching God is putting in my heart, uh, maybe healing the sick, cast out demons and other things. So I'm, I'm excited for this series. It, it really, I, I, it really do something. 
I want to start with saying that the baptism with the Holy Spirit is not a Pentecostal church thing. It's not a, for a few special denominations. It is for all of us. It is part of the new birth. It's part of the promise God has given us, as we have looked at. And it's, it's just for all of us. And um, also, also for children, and no matter who you are. And I actually got that honor a few days ago to um, teach at our camp. We have a camp outside of land right now with a school. And I got the honor to teach the kids of the Holy Spirit. And I was sitting with a lot of kids. You can see a picture here. And I was sitting in front of a lot of kids talking about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And I used this different illustration. There was air conditioning and the wind was blowing in. I said, do you see the wind blow? No, but come here and can you feel the wind blow? Yes, you can feel it. You can see, you cannot see it directly, but you can feel it. And then I put something in front of the wind, some paper, and you can see the paper was uh, moving like this. So I talked about the Holy Spirit like a wind coming into us and how we need to be filled by that the breath of, breath of God, the Holy Spirit. I talked a little about it last time when Jesus blew from heaven and a mighty wind filled the room and so on. And then I used the balloon, I assemble here, and say, I put air in this balloon now. And I fill up this balloon by my breath, my air, the same way God wants to breathe life into us. And when it's filled, a sound is coming out. And it don't sound so good. I guess that's what I'm talking about. Tongues and Holy Spirit filling us up. And then how we need to continue being filled by the Spirit. I know it's a, a, a more children level, uh, not so deep, but they understood it. And, and afterward, we prayed for people, and many got filled with the Holy Spirit. It was so beautiful. When I went, walked out the room, one of the older kids, he was standing outside, crying, hugging his father. And he was crying, 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 hugging his father. I went up, up, and I went to them and said, are you okay? And he was crying, and tears was running down. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. And the father said, tell Torben what you just told me. When you prayed for me, I... I felt like I got a new heart and a new mind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And he was crying. I love it. And it was what happened. He got a new heart, <laughs> new mind. He felt like he got a new life. The Holy Spirit came into him. And he was so thankful. And, and we saw healing among the kids. They were so beautiful in the evenings. We, we had a meeting where I talked about the Holy Spirit and another one got filled with the Holy Spirit. Four people got baptized in water. The woman who got filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized water that night was a woman that just met on Walmart a few days before down in the city who is now born again and have a new life. So God is working and, and it is for all of us. And it's not just a Pentecostal thing. It is a, a Jesus thing is part of the Bible. So put your church denomination away and let's look at the Bible together. I want to start with the word Pentecost because if you go to Acts 2, Acts 2, 1 and 2, we read here, it was about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one account in one place and suddenly they came a sound from heaven, and we read about how they were filled with the Holy Spirit. But I want to add here, when the day of Pentecost came, what you need to understand is that Pentecost was a tradition at the time of the Jews. It was tradition at that time, even before Jesus came on earth, they were celebrating Pentecost. And Pentecost, at that time, before the Holy Spirit came and before the church really got founded and the church began, Pentecost was already a day of celebration. And if you look at what they celebrated, you really just are amazed of what God did that day. 
and how it was prophesied many years before and how it was a picture. The Old Testament is a picture, a shadow of what should come. Because the word Pentecost is a Greek word and it actually means 50. 50. Pentecost um, are actually celebrating the 50 days after Passover. It's also called the Feast of Weeks. It's seven weeks, and seven is a holy day in the Bible, so we have seven days times seven weeks is 49, and the next day they celebrated the first day of a new beginning. So it was, in the Old Testament, the Passover at that time, now we celebrate Christ crucified, the blood of the Lamb, forgiveness of sins, salvation out of of Egypt, uh, ex- no, salvation out of this world. And uh, I'm going to talk about that more, much more later on, on other lessons. Uh, but at that time, you know, Passover was because a Pharaoh wanted to kill the Israelite in Egypt. And they slaughtered a lamb and put the blood over the door. And they were saved out of Egypt by the, and the firstborn died. And I've talked a little about that. That is a picture of Christ. But that was Passover, seven times seven is 49. And one day after we have the day, the, the week, uh, feast of weeks, the 50th day. Ah, uh, the first, let's say like that. It's, also, it's the, a new beginning. It's as a, a thanksgiving of the first fruit of the wheat harvest. So it's a new beginning. It's a thanksgiving of the first fruit and it's also remembering of the law God gave Moses on Mount Sinai. So it's all of those days combined. New beginning, the first fruit and the law God gave Moses. It's all coming together on that day. And that was what they came to celebrate in in Jerusalem at that day. A new beginning. The law given by Moses and the first fruit. The first fruit of the harvest. And it's just so beautiful when you then start to see the picture. Because the law that was given by Moses was written on stones. Now the Holy Spirit came down and wrote the law on our heart. The law is now written on our heart, as the Bible says. And that is happening when the Spirit comes in. And uh, what happened when the law came by Moses on stone? What actually happened that day was that 3,000 people died that day. We read that in Exodus here, uh, 32, 28. We read here that they, they o- disobeyed God's command and 3,000 people died that day. Why? Because they broke, broke the law. But what happened on Pentecost? We read that here. That those who received the word was baptized and 3,000, about 3,000 people, souls was added to the church. So when Moses came down with the law, 3,000 died. When Jesus came and with a new beginning and the first fruit of the kingdom of God, 3,000 souls were saved, was added. And 2 Corinthians 3, 6 says this, who also have made us able ministry of a new testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills but the Spirit give life. And this is exactly what we saw. So Pentecost had one meaning. Passover had one meaning. The celebration we see from, from the beginning of the world had a meaning and was all a shadow and all a picture. And with Christ came, it got a more clear meaning and understanding and a new covenant. So therefore, Pentecost was the birth of the church. It was the first fruit. 
it was a new beginning. And it was the time where God came down with his spirit and wrote, wrote the law in our hearts. Pentecost was a very, very special day. And therefore, you also need to understand that Pentecost, that day we read about in Acts 2, is not going to be repeated like that again. It is not. It was a very special day and a new beginning. Pentecost only happened one day, one time like this. The rest of the book of Acts, we read about 30 years of history. But now we have 2,000 years of history. Pentecost, exactly like that, is not going to be repeated again. Because that day was very, very special. And after that day, we see there is a very clear picture in the Bible, as we looked about, where people first repent and then be baptized to Christ. And they receive the Holy Spirit. And it often happened the same day. Often happened by the laying on our hands when people pray for them. That did not happen on Pentecost. Why? Because it was special. They have already repented for a long time, but they needed to wait to the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now we don't wait anymore. And at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and blew and filled them up. No one laid hands on them because there was no one who could lay hands on them because no one had the Holy Spirit. So today we can lay hands on people and they can receive the Holy Spirit. At that time, no one laid hands on them. So Pentecost was special. It was a one-time event and it was part of God's amazing plan. And now we are living in a new covenant. So I just want to start with that. So when Peter and Pentecost in Acts 2, 38 said, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness or remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This became this, the, 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 that became the main thing people needed to do from then on. And it happened very often the same day, the same moment when people came to faith, they repented, they got baptized with full immersion to Christ for the forgiveness of sins. People lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The apostles, Peter and the rest who said that, did not experience that themselves in that direct order the same day. Why? Because the new beginning started there. It was a new beginning. So, uh, so it's beautiful. So we are not going to focus so much here on X2 because X2 was more special. We are going to focus more on some of the other examples that is more in line with how you and me today will receive the Holy Spirit. But it's so beautiful. It is so beautiful what God is doing. I love it. I love it to see from the beginning. And also with tongues in X2, it was also special. Because they spoke in tongues in a way also where people from other nations all understood what they were saying. Because there was a message given here that, that they received power and they, and they should be witness to all nations. And the word, word of God will come to all nations. And it already happened that day where people from all nations was gathered together in Jerusalem to celebrate the 50 day, the feast of weeks, the new beginning, the law of Moses, and then the new covenant started and they all got spread out right away with the gospel. So it is, it was different tongues in that sense, but we can see, still see that tongue today. And I'm going to talk about that in the next lesson where we are going to look at the gift of the Holy Spirit and more on looking at tongues. So that was a little long beginning, but I just want to lay this foundation and then we will move on. So let's look at how you receive the Holy Spirit. And first, I want to start with one of the biggest misunderstandings I see in the church today. And it's really important we, we, we look at this because there's millions of people out there who believe they already have the Holy Spirit, but they don't. And look at the last lesson I did. If the fruit is missing, if you don't have no honor, the love, the peace, the power, the miracles, all of this, why do you believe you have the Holy Spirit? If all of those things that accomplish the Holy Spirit is not in your life, 
in is not in people's life. And we we need to be clear in what the word is saying, and that people feel, believe they have this Holy Spirit, but don't. The most loving thing to do is to start to show them and help them to see that they don't. Because if if they believe they have, they are not seeking anything more. They already believe they have it. But if they see they don't, they can do something about it. They can see the Holy Spirit come and their life will be changed. And one of the biggest lies in the churches today is that people believe that you receive the Holy Spirit automatically in that moment you come to faith. And this is a general thing we see almost everywhere. And, and, and if you Google, when, how do you receive the Holy Spirit? Most pages out there is saying that, that you automatically receive the Holy Spirit when you come to faith. And then some people say, but there is also an extra filling with the Holy Spirit. But look at my last lesson where I make it very clear that it's one of the same. Um, the misunderstanding is, is mainly out of Ephesians 1.13. That is the scripture most people quote. They also quote a few others from Romans, but Ephesians 1.13 is always there. And we are going to look at that. Ephesians 1.13 are saying this. In whom you also trusted after you have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit as promised. So when you read this, you heard the gospel, you believed, and you were sealed. After you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit as promised. People take these words and, and say, look here, when you believe, when you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit as promised. This is clear, you receive the Holy Spirit automatically when you believe. But this is not what the word is saying. This is not what the word is saying. If you go and look at other places, it's so clear that you do not automatically receive the Holy Spirit when you believe. One of the clear examples is Paul in Ephesus, in book of Acts 19, chapter, verse 1 and 2. You read here that Paul... He came to Ephesus, and there you read, and he found some disciples. And he said to them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Another translation was, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? That is a very, 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 very weird question, Paul. Why do you ask if we have received the Holy Spirit since we believed. Why do you ask if we have received the Holy Spirit? Of course we have received the Holy Spirit because we all receive the Holy Spirit automatically in that moment we believe. This is like, what? You, why, Paul? But that question was not a weird question in the time of the Bible. That they met people and they asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? That was not a weird question because the early church did not teach, did not believe that you will receive the Holy Spirit automatically when you believe. So therefore, in the early church, when they met believers, they needed sometimes to ask them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Some people received the Holy Spirit when they came to faith, but there was also people who did not received the Holy Spirit right away when they came to faith. So when Paul met Christians and said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? It was not a strange question. It's only a strange question for those people out there who are teaching false teaching and say it happened automatically. Another place where it's even more clear that you do not automatically receive the Holy Spirit when you believe. If is in Acts 8. When we read about Philip, and we can see here that Philip came down to Samaria, and we read here from verse 6, 
And the people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracle which he did. And then you can read on that demons came out with loud voice and there was many lame who was healed and so on. And then verse 12. But when they believed Philip's preaching concerning the kingdom in the name of Jesus, they were baptized, men and women. So here we read that they listened to Philip's words. We read that they believed Philip's words. And we read that they were baptized into Christ. But then we also continue reading. But when the apostle, which was in Jerusalem, heard that they had received the word of God, so they had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John. And when they came down, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, that they might receive the Holy Spirit for as yet have not fallen on them. They have only been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or be baptized in water. So they lay their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. I like the Holy Spirit more, but maybe my Danish translation. So here we see that they have a received the word. That is what they said. They believed Philip's preaching. They believed. They were baptized into Christ. They heard. They received the word. They believed. They were baptized, but they have not yet received. It is so clear out of this. It is so, so, so clear that it is possible to hear the word. It's possible to receive the word. It's possible to believe. It's possible to be baptized to Christ without receiving the Holy Spirit. How many more proof should we have? It is so clear. So when did they receive the Holy Spirit? Did they receive the Holy Spirit when they received the word or believed the word? No. When they believed Christ? No. When they got baptized? No. The proof is here. They first received the Holy Spirit later when somebody, and that somebody in this case was the apostle, where they lay hands on them, there they received. And there went a time from re believing, rep repent, believing, baptism to receiving the Holy Spirit. And if the apostle had not come and prayed for them, maybe they have not received the Holy Spirit. Like today, it is the same today. I have met hundreds of people who have re received the word, who have believed in Christ, who have got baptized in water, but have not yet received the Holy Spirit. Hondas. And I, when I lay hands on them and pray for them, they dare receive the Holy Spirit. I have hundreds of testimonies. It's, it's many testimonies like that. So it, it is our testimonies line up with what the Word is saying. Yes, the Holy Spirit is already working in a person. How can you come to faith unless the Holy Spirit is drawing? How can you receive the word if it's not a work of the Holy Spirit? How can you repent if the Holy Spirit don't grant you repentance and do a work in your heart? How can you how can you be baptized in a baptism is also a Holy Spirit is working in baptism and wash away your sins and all of that? But there is a difference between the Holy Spirit working in your life and then receiving the Holy Spirit or being filled up with the Holy Spirit or being baptized with the Holy Spirit. It's one of the same thing. Again, they'll use the word receiving here, not the word being baptized. They use the word receiving, and you can go in and use even search them more if you want, but it's the same word, receiving the Holy Spirit. Um, and I talked a little about that in the last lesson, um, that there's so many misunderstandings. But then how do I explain the word we just read in Ephesians 1 first? How do you explain that? In whom you trusted after you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believed, 
you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. How do we explain our words like this? Easily. Easy. The first question is, who are you? Who are you in this text? Who is the person he's writing to? He said, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit as promised. Who is you? You is not you who was seeing this video. You is not me. You is not our fellowship here. Paul did not write the letter to you. He did not write the letter to me. He did not write the letter to our fellowship. He actually did not write the letter to a uh, Catholic church or Mormon church or Pentecostal church or Baptist church or Lutheran church or any church denomination we have today. He wrote the letter to those people there. And what did those people there do? Those people there, those people there received the Holy Spirit after they believed. Like we see in Acts 8, that those people there received the Holy Spirit after they believed. Not right away, but after they believed, they received the Holy Spirit. The problem today, now we have people, Jehovah's Witness, who are reading this same verse. Were you not sealed with the Holy Spirit when, when you believed? Yes, we were. We, you, we received the Holy Spirit when we believed. Yes, we have Mormons reading the same. Look, this is a proof. We have the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Bible says so. We have Catholics who say, look here, this is the proof. We have Baptist people who say, look here, there is the proof. The Bible says this. When we believe, we were filled with the Holy Spirit. Here is the proof. But it was not written to you. It was not written to you. If Paul was writing to a Jehovah's Witness, he would say something else than this. He would not say to Jehovah's Witness, uh, after who you believe you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, he would say, repent, come away from your cult and understand who Christ really is. He would not write the same to the Catholic Church. He would say, stop Believe in that tradition and lie of man. You need to repent and be baptized with full immersion. And then you shall receive the Holy Spirit. If we write to a Baptist church, he will not say this. He will say something else. He will say that, hey, when you believed and repented, it was beautiful. But you also need to receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> like he will write it different. Like today, if, if I will write to some of the, the churches and fellowship we have started, and I know those people. I will say the same. I will write a letter to them. Say, hey, don't you remember when you heard the word of the God and the word of God, the gospel of your salvation, that you, after you believed, you were filled with the Holy Spirit? Don't you remember that? Like, I will be able to say this to those people we work with today. Why? Because they had received the Holy Spirit. But there's many other people I will not be able to say the same to. So again, who are you? You is not you who has seen this video. You is not me. You is not Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, Baptists, even Pentecostal Church. You are those people. And those people in that time received the Holy Spirit when you believe. But sadly, many don't do today. Another thing here we read, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit as promised. After you believed. How long time after did those people in Ephesus he wrote to receive the Holy Spirit? We don't know. But we know in Samaria, they also, after they believed, received the Holy Spirit. How long time did they go there? I don't know if it went a few days before they traveled down or heard, or maybe it went a few weeks or maybe longer. I don't know how long time. That came. They didn't have telephone or internet, but the rumors were spread from Samaria to Jerusalem that Samaria had received the word and they heard about it and they sent people down there and they did not have cars. So it could have taken days or maybe some weeks. I don't know how fast it went, but let's say it went some days. Some days after they believed, they received the Holy Spirit. So maybe it's a few days. 
or maybe it was longer time. So you don't automatically receive the Holy Spirit when you believe. And it's clear, look at Acts 8, look at Acts 19 and read Ephesians 1.13 and really understand what is saying, who is writing to, and what is saying after you believe you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So don't believe in that lie. And again, look at the fruit. Remember what I spoke about in the last lesson. You can know a tree by the fruit. Uh, if the power to become a martyr is not there, if the boldness is not there, if the miracles is not there, if the wisdom of the Spirit is not there, if the love and joy and peace is not there, there is a big, big, big change that they have not yet received the Holy Spirit. And if you look at the church in general, the mainstream church, Christianity, you just see many places that there is no power. That is the facts. No love, no joy, no peace, no power, no wisdom of the Spirit, no leading, leading by the Holy Spirit. Like There is no testimonies, there is no life of what God is doing in a person's life. We need to have that testimony. We baptized another guy a few days ago. He was a homeless guy. He was in Walmart. He was standing there. He was crying out to God. He was crying. He just got divorced. It was very hard for him. And he was crying and saying, God, I need you. Send somebody. And then he go out the door. And one of our people from the school, he was led by the Holy Spirit. Go to that person. And he went to him. I feel I should go to you. And he got born again, baptized in water, Holy Spirit. He was a person of peace. God led the student, one of our friends, help us to him. We should have those testimonies. But many people don't have the testimonies. Why? Because they don't have the power. Why? Because they don't have the spirit. So this is how it is. So let's go and, and move on and say, how did they receive the Holy Spirit? In Acts 8, we just looked at. The apostle came there down and we read here verse 70. Then lay they <clears throat> and were seventeen, and they lay their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. How did they receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? How, when did that happen? When they lay their hands on them, and this is something we are going to see. Again and again and again in the Bible. And it's what we're seeing in our life today. That was how I received the Holy Spirit. I came to a meeting. First time I was I went in church. And, and somebody asked if somebody wanted the Holy Spirit. I had not heard of the Holy Spirit. But I went up to prayer anyway. I felt something was calling me. And a guy, he said, Tom, let, let me pray for you. Just close your eyes and lift up your hands. I, I did like this. I had no idea what to expect. But when he laid a hands on me. I felt like it was, it's almost like a, 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 a light came into my body. I felt something like blue just filled me up. And I fell to the floor and I was laying with the most amazing feeling through the whole body, like electricity through my whole body. And it was like a power that came into me. And I felt that power coming into me. And when I stood up, my life was changed. When I left that church, hallelujah, I had power. I had boldness. My life was completely changed from that moment on. And I really like talk about power, boldness and Wisdom, things changed. I never wrote a, I never read a book my whole life. Now I've written like seven, eight books, translated to many languages. I, I had a speaking mistake. I could not speak correctly. I could not stand in front of people. Now I've spoken, spoken in front of millions of people. I had no self confidence. I, I was the guy who was teased in school and had problem and a big boy and no friends and all of that. And suddenly I'm like, hallelujah. <laughs> What happened? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. When did it happen? When they laid their hands on me, the Holy Spirit came. But it don't happen automatically, but it happened there. You know, I've been deceived before. I've been baptized as a baby in Lutheran Church, and they also laid hands on me and prayed. Oh, Holy Spirit, come over this baby. But I did not receive anything at that time. That was clear. But later, 
when they lay hands on me. There, I received. Maybe because I have now repented and because those who prayed for me actually had the Holy Spirit. In the Lutheran Church, they did not have the Holy Spirit. So what? how can they give the Spirit like that if they haven't received? Freely, you have received freely. Give. Um, so uh, I received the Holy Spirit and everything changed. And since then, I prayed for hundreds of people. Maybe even thousands soon who have received the Holy Spirit. Like last, this week, I prayed for four people who received the Holy Spirit, five people. We had an open house a few days ago also and prayed for me. Like, we, we, I've seen many, many people. I've seen sometimes like 50, 20, 50 people in one meeting received the Holy Spirit. So, so I love it. I love it. I love it. Again, it's, it comes by laying on hands, but it did not come automatically because people in the Lutheran church, other people laid hands on me where nothing happened. But it happens there when they lay hands on them. And, and it was visible for all. And it's always visible when the Holy Spirit truly comes. And we see that in Acts 8. And when Simon saw that the laying on the hands was, uh, that on the laying on the hands the Holy Spirit was given, he wanted that same power that whoever I lay hands on will receive the Holy Spirit. So he recognized that it was by the laying on the hands they received the Holy Spirit. And, and the same we see in Acts 9, 19, we read before when Paul came to Ephesus and when he asked, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we have not heard of the Holy Spirit and so on. Like many people today really don't understand the Holy Spirit thing. Maybe today they will not say we have not heard of the Holy Spirit, but they say, what do you mean of receiving the Holy Spirit? I don't know what you are talking about. But then Paul took the time to explain to them and found out that they're not being baptized correctly. They've only been baptized with John's baptism. And he talked about how uh, John baptized in water to baptize to repentance, but saying that just to also believe in Christ who come after and he will baptize with Holy Spirit. And when they heard this, they were first baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were first baptized in water. And again, and when Paul lay hands on them, the Holy Ghost, Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So again, we see the same. They got baptized correct this time in water. And when he lay hands on them, in the moment he lay hands on them, they were filled or baptized or received the Holy Spirit. And they again, like we see uh, other places, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There was a sign. So again, it did not happen in the baptism. It happened when they came out of the water and he laid hands on them. So that is the normal way. There is also another example in the Bible with Acts 10, where they did not lay hands. And that was uh, Peter in the house of Cornelius. They received the Holy Spirit while they heard the word. The Spirit came upon them. And how did he know that the Spirit came upon them? Again, he heard them speak in tongues and prophesied. And this is what we are seeing through Acts. There is a sign when people receive the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues. Sometimes speaking tongues and prophesy. Sometimes speaking in tongues and worship God. But here he did not lay hands on them in Acts 10. Why? Because Peter, Peter, he will never go and lay hands on those Gentiles. In his mind, he thought they were Gentiles. They could not receive the Spirit like us. So Acts 10 is also very, very special. That was actually the first time the gospel came to the Gentiles. First to the Jews, but then to the Gentiles. So Acts 10 is also not what will happen often. It's not something that often repeats itself again and again and again. It happened there in that moment. Why? Because it was something special. Now we know that Gentiles, not Jews, can also receive the Holy Spirit. So now we'll just preach the gospel to them. Now we'll just baptize them in water. Now we'll just lay hands on them. But at that time, they never had done it before they got this experience. But here he was preaching. We read why Peter still spoke the word. The Holy Spirit came over all who heard the message. No hands. And he was amazed. And then, because he heard them speaking tongues and praising God, and Peter says, surely no one can 
staying in the way of them being baptized in water, now they have received the Spirit like us, and they got baptized in water. It can also happen like that. My wife, Lena, has experienced without laying on her hands. Her parents have received the Holy Spirit, and she was very young, 10, 11 years old. And when they, her parents received the Holy Spirit, she's like, I want the Holy Spirit. So she had a childlike faith, came in, closed the door, prayed to her Father in heaven, I want to have the Holy Spirit come with the Holy Spirit over me. And there, alone in her room, the Holy Spirit came and filled her up. She received tongues and she received a new life. And she got changed. That is what the Holy Spirit do. It changed your life. So it can happen like that. So uh, again, we see here also in those examples that the, the spoken tongues, spoken tongues or prophesy, spoken tongues or worship God. There was a sign. Also, when like the apostle came to Samaria, they saw that the Holy Spirit had not yet been given to them. And they lay hands on them and there they received. And a guy like Simon saw that the Holy Spirit had been given by the hands of the apostle. What did he see? In Acts 8, it was not clear what he saw. But if you take Acts 10, Acts 19, and the other examples, you see clear what is happening. What is it? They speak in tongues. It's overflowing. When do you know somebody is full? It's flowing over. If you're full of anger, it's coming out of your mouth. If you're full of joy, it's coming out of your mouth. If you're full of the Spirit, it's coming out of your mouth. And in this case, they all spoke in tongues. Sometimes spoken tongues and worship. Sometimes spoken tongues and prophesying. The Holy Spirit is coming. They're getting a new birth, a new language. In the spirits of birth, when we're born physical, we get a physical language where we can communicate with our Father. On earth, when we get born spiritual, we get a spiritual language where we can communicate with our spiritual father who's in heaven. And I'll talk more about that in the next lesson where we're going to look at tongues and the different kind of tongues. There's a lot of misunderstanding about tongues because people don't understand there's different kind of tongues, four kind. And, and it's not... Like the tongues of Pentecost, Acts 2 is not the tongues we see here. And, and, and the person tongues, it's not where I speak to man, it's where I speak mysteries to God. And I believe that is for all of us. And we're going to look at that in the next lesson. I don't say by that that those who don't speak in tongues don't have the Spirit. Because there is people who are truly, truly received the Holy Spirit. But they have never used the gift. So I don't say if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Spirit. But I'm saying if you have the Spirit, you have tongues. And I'm going to talk about that in the next lesson. There's so much to cover here about the Holy Spirit. I already know we speak, spoke 15 minutes already. But I want to lay a foundation here. So again, laying on our hands. But you can also pray yourself. And that is actually what Jesus is saying in Luke 11, where he talked about the Lord's Prayer. Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread. When he in Luke 11 teaches about the Lord's Prayer, he continues and continues talking about if you have a friend and you come to him in the middle of the night and say, friend, lean me three loaves of bread. Your friend, he will give you the bread, not because you come and ask him middle of the night, maybe not because you want to, but because you keep pressing through. And Jesus talk about that. And then he says this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And continues. For everyone who asks, receive. The one who seek, find. The one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? And then he comes. If you then, who are evil, knows how to give good gift to your children, how much more 
Will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Hallelujah. Why do we always like, I prayed the Lord's Prayer for years in the Lutheran Church without ever coming further down and actually read all of it in Luke 11. I, I didn't read the Bible, I just learned the prayer. No one has ever said that to me. You that even know how to give good kids to your children, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Ask God to give you the Holy Spirit. Seek. The Bible says here, ask and keep asking. It's actually what is written in the context. It's how it's written, the way it's written in a... Is in is written in a continued tent. Ask and keep asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep seeking until you find, and you find. Knock and keep knocking until the door will open, and it will be open. So if you keep asking until you receive, you will receive. If you keep seeking until you find, you will find. If you keep knocking until the door will be open, it will be open for you. If you ask God. And keep asking for the Holy Spirit. He will give you the Holy Spirit. It's also for you. This is the promise for you and your children and everyone who's far out. It's for all people. But we need to want it. We need to be hungry. We need that hunger. So who is the promise for? It's for all. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see vision, old men will dream dreams. And then we talk about the boldness, the power, the love, and all of it. It's my spirit on all people. It's not only for a few, it is for all. So what should we do? We should do what Peter said there. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, us, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. And we shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the normal way from Acts 2 and forward. Repent, be baptized, and you shall receive. Yes, sometimes you repent first and be baptized later. Receive then, and then get baptized in water, like in Acts 10. But the norm is Otherwise, this repent, baptize, and receive the Holy Spirit. I'll, I want to share some stories. I know I spoke almost an hour, but I don't want to do so much longer. But I'll, I, I, I need to to finish up. I still have some more things to say. I want to share a few stories. When I started to 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 pray for people with the gift of the Holy Spirit, it was one out of twenty who received the Holy Spirit. I did not know why that one did, and the 20, 19 others did not. Then I, I grew my walk and how to share the gospel. It became five out of 20 and then it became eight out of 20. Then I really understood the promise of God and the, what Jesus promised and, 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 and how it works. And it became 18 out of 20, 90 out of 20. And now if we have people to work with longer time, because sometimes people have strongholds and ideas in the mind we need to deal with. Now it's 20 out of 20. If I have long, long time to work with people. Why? Because it is for all. Example, when I came to Boston some years ago, a woman came to me on a meeting and said, I really want the Holy Spirit. I prayed, nothing happened. I prayed, nothing happened. I prayed, nothing happened. I prayed, and she starts to cry and say, what is wrong with me? Why can I not receive the Holy Spirit? And there I thought, what is happening here? God, she really, really, really want the Holy Spirit. You really, really, really want to give the Holy Spirit. What is wrong? Where is the problem on the line here? She wanted it, and God wanted it even more. She's crying. She's asking, God, why? Why nothing happened? And then I looked at God and said, God, you promise. And then I remember what did God promise? He promised if we repent and be baptized, we shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I looked at her and said, have you been baptized? Yes. When? As a baby in the Catholic Church? Mm -mm, that was not what God promised. God did not say get water on your head in a tradition. Then later, get Repent and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Wrong order. You cannot bury the old man if you are not crucified him yet. See listen about the baptism model. So I said you need to get baptized again. I cannot stand on God's promise if you don't do what God has said we should do. 
So we went out and baptized her as soon as he came out of water. The Holy Spirit came and filled her up. It was so beautiful. And God confirmed it. That suddenly there was another man in the water. I need to get baptized. I need to get baptized. I said, who are you? Do I know you? Were you at my meeting? No, but I just heard a voice said, I was supposed to park a car there. I heard a voice say, drive here and park here instead. I just saw what happened. I want the same. I want to be baptized. <laughs> so God just lit a random guy up and said, have you received the Holy Spirit? And he looked at me. Do you know about the Holy Spirit? Uh, I'm a Catholic. <laughs> he knew nothing. But the Holy Spirit said, take him out. He's ready. I took him out, talked with him, baptized him. And soon he came out of water. He spoke in tongues. Beautiful. So, so God is working there. And then I learned something. I went to another meeting that was in Denmark at that time. A girl prayed for her, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. And I said, and she cried again, why can I not receive the Holy Spirit? And I said to her, have you been baptized? She said, yes, I have. Yeah, but when? Babies cannot be baptized. Because I thought she had been baptized in the Lutheran church. She said, not as a baby. I got baptized in a Baptist church. Hmm. When was that? Oh, when I was 14. Okay. When did you repent? When did you really come to faith and deep repentance change your heart? When I was 30. Aha! That was not what Jesus said. Or Paul, what Peter said here. Be baptized and then repent and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. It is not what I said. That baptism you did when you were 14 was not a real baptism. It was just a pool party, as I said in one of the other lessons. You cannot get baptized without repentance. And I talked with her about it. And that day she understood she needed to be baptized again after she had repented. And we baptized her as soon as she came out of water. She spoke in tongues. She received the Holy Spirit right away. So here I had two cases where people was not able to receive the Holy Spirit. But then when they got baptized after they repented what God said, they received the Holy Spirit right away. And I've seen that many, 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 many times because this is what God promised. Yes, there is also some people who receive the Holy Spirit before they are baptized, but they still, you know, they, but they still need to be baptized later. I don't know why some people receive the Holy Spirit before and some people cannot receive it. They have to go that way. But maybe it's because, especially people who grow up in traditions, and lies, when you get baptized on your own faith, we repent and understand what baptism is, you bury all those traditions and those lies, and it's so much easier to receive the Holy Spirit there. And that's why we see almost 20 out of 20 receive the Holy Spirit right now. Why? Because we take the time to lay out the gospel. They understand what repentance is, then they get baptized after repentance, and they receive the Holy Spirit. Why? Because this is what God have promised. When I say 20 out and 90 out of 20, there is still a few people we need to work with. And I had people who have not been able to receive the Holy Spirit for years. And they have repented, have been baptized, but they strongholds, ideas. But then when we do a teaching, some, I was in South Africa. And a guy, he's like, I cannot receive the Holy Spirit. And he, I said, I've been praying for three years. I repent, I got baptized, but I don't know why. And then we were sitting and talking, and while we were talking, he suddenly said, I got it. I understand it. Put your hands on me. I said, what? Put your hands on me. I said, what? Put your hands on me. I'm like, okay. And I put my hands on him, and right away he received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues, and we had a powerful moment. What happened? He had had wrong ideas and teaching from the churches. And when that lie was revealed, he was like, I got it. Now I understand. Put my hand, your hand on me. And he was able to receive and he spoke in tongues overflow and it was beautiful. So I want to say like that, um, it is for you, it's for everyone. It's often by the laying on the hands. There is a sign when people receive the Holy Spirit reading the Bible. Spoken tongues, sometimes spoken tongues, worship, spoken tongues, prophesy. The norm is repent, be baptized, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Some people receive the Holy Spirit first, but they don't mean that they don't need to be baptized later in water. They need is very important. There can still be strongholds and ideas in some people where, where they, they, it hindered them. The fear, tradition. And next time, in the next teacher, I'm going to spend much more time on how to receive the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Spirit. Um, so I'm going to look more at that there. 
So I hope you are ready for that. There, there is one more thing I just need to cover. I know I spoke more than an hour now, but there is just a few more minutes. I need to cover the whole thing with the fire, baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. Because there's a lot of misunderstandings there. If you go in and look at Matthew 3, 11, John the Baptist, John is saying this, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who are more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. There is a lot of misunderstanding and there is an idea out there that we need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Like there is a fire baptism. There is a Holy Spirit baptism. But if you really go the whole way, you get the Holy Spirit and fire. Keep away from that. That is really not biblical. And, and I've seen people actually go in where they receive wrong spirits in the end. There is no extra fire baptism in the Bible. When you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, you have Him. You have everything you need. The Bible is not talking. You don't see any place in the book of Acts where they receive the Holy Spirit and then they receive a fire baptism. Some people will say, yeah, but Acts 2, we read here that it appears to them cloven tongues like of, as of fire who sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, okay, first they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible don't say they're all filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There is no place where we read that they're filled with Holy Ghost and fire. They're just filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. But it appears to them cloven tongues like as of fire. It was like fire. It was not fire. It was just like fire. Like when Jesus got baptized, the Holy Spirit came like a dove. It don't mean that it was a dove coming down, flying down and setting on Jesus. It was not a dove. It was like a dove coming down. It was not a dove coming down. It was like a dove. It was not fire coming there. It was like fire. It looked like fire. It, it, it was like fire. Something came. It was like a dove. It was not fire and it was not a dove. What is the fire he's speaking about here? This is not just like fire he's speaking about. Jesus is really going to baptize people with the Holy Spirit and fire. And it's the real Holy Spirit, but it's also the real fire. There will be a baptism of fire. And we don't want that baptism. If somebody said, do you want the baptism of fire? Come up here and let me pray for you. I'll run away. I will say, no, I don't want the fire baptism. Why? Because what is the fire baptism? If you go in and read the words before and the words after, always context, 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 always context. Let's read Matthew 3, 11 again, but not only 11. Let's read 10 and 12. Listen here. The axe is already at the root of the tree, and every tree who do not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So we are talking about a fire here. Those trees who do not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into fire. Or let's say those people who do not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into fire. I baptize you with water to repentance, but after me comes one who's more powerful for me, whose sandals I am not worried to, worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire. His fan is in his hand, and he will clean the threshing floor, gather his wheat into the barn, and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Fire is written in all three verses here. Fire, fire, fire. 
The first fire is judgment. The last fire is judgment. The middle fire is also judgment. Jesus, he came first time to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Immerse us in, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. Fill us up with the Holy Spirit from inside out. Immersion all over. Next time he will come and baptize us, not with the Holy Spirit, but with fire. First time he came as the Savior. Next time he come as the judge. We, Jesus said, he would baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. We now are receiving the Holy Spirit. And one day, those who have not received the Holy Spirit, they will be baptized with fire. Immersed into fire, the unquenchable fire when he will judge the world. This is what he's saying here. Reading context. He's not talking about you need the Holy Spirit and an extra fire baptism. No, you need the Holy Spirit. Christ in us, the Holy Spirit. We don't want to be baptized with the fire. No, that is those people who do not bear good fruit, who will be thrown into that fire. That is when he come and clean his, his dressing hole and divide the sheep from the goats and he will throw people in the uncrinchable fire. That fire is judgment. Men day. It is so important you read the word in context, context, context. Um, I actually did a lesson on the Pioneer School, lesson 24. I put a link in in the description called Copy Paste Christianity. Copy Paste Christianity. Look at it. It's, it's a really good lesson, to be honest. Uh, I come with many examples of how we live our, we take verses out of context instead of seeing the big picture. And this is what we do. So I will end up here. Oh, sorry, I hit the camera here. I just move it back. Ah, you can see it, it's fine. I will end up here. The promise of the Holy Spirit is for all of us. It's for you. If you repent and be baptized, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can pray, you can ask, you can seek, you can cry out to God. And God, he can fill you with the Holy Spirit where you are right now. When people are full of the Spirit, it's running over, overflow. We see in the Bible the spoken tongues and prophesy spoken tongues and worship God. And, and that is the person tongues we're talking about. Not the tongues to edify the church where we need an interpretation of the tongues on Pentecost where they already understood it on other languages. But much more about that in the next lesson. Let's stop here and I will pray for you right now. Come on, you have heard the word. Believe. If you are not yet got baptized in water and, and really received the Holy Spirit, I will pray. F you need to get baptized in water. But I will pray for you if you have repented and got baptized in water, you will receive the Holy Spirit right now. If you don't receive the Holy Spirit while I'm lay praying for you, find somebody near you who has the Holy Spirit and let them lay hands on you and you will receive. But right now, lay hands on yourself and, and I will pray through the camera. God, I thank you for this teaching. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for your truth. And I ask right now for those who are seeing this video who have not yet received the Holy Spirit. God, come with your Holy Spirit over them right now where they are. Holy Spirit, come. Fill them up right now. Those who are laying hands on themselves, God. Come with your Holy Spirit right now over them right now in the name of Jesus, God. Holy Spirit, come. Fill them up right now. Fill them up more. More Holy Spirit, come over them right now. Bodo Koski Salabade, fill them up right now in the name of Jesus. Fill them up right now. And if you feel like just open your mouth, start to speak in tongues. Let the first words come out. Not speak English, not speak another language you understand. Just just if you feel something's coming up, just shilabada. Say the first word, maybe like me, shilabada. Let it just flow up to you. Badada Kosko Salabada Koski Salade. Holy Spirit, come over them all right now. Come with you, Holy Spirit, over them all right now. Fill them up. Overflow, overflow, overflow right now. Let them be filled by the Holy Spirit. Right now, God, I ask in the name of Jesus. 
Holy Spirit, come by that day, day, day. I also speak freedom. I speak healing to you right now. You have pain in your body. I command all pain to go right now. You who, who need freedom from depression, fear, anxiety, I command this spirit to leave him right now in the name of Jesus. I speak freedom to you. I speak healing to you right now. Just begin to worship God. Just begin to speak in tongues. Just spend time with him. Worship him. Speak in tongues. And I'll leave you with that. Worship God. Pray. Speak in tongues. Let it flow out of you. Spend some time with God and, 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 and be ready for next time where I will speak to you about the different gift and how you speak in tongues and different kind of tongues and use tongues, how you use tongues to fill up yourself. And, 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 and edify yourself. And I also want to spend time next time to, to talk about how you continue walking by the Spirit. So see you next time. God bless you all out there. Bye-bye.